everyone. I'm Megan McGurman. And I'm Jason Tokarski. Welcome to another episode of For the Love of Health, brought to you by Christiana Care. The world of technology has expanded rapidly over the past few years, from video chatting to generative artificial intelligence. And while it's all become part of our day-to-day lives, it's also directly influencing how we receive our medical care. Which brings us to our eighth toughest question in healthcare: How is technology changing healthcare? To discuss that question today are Randy Gaborio, Christiana Care's Chief Digital and Information Officer, and Dr. Tim Shu, Christiana Care's Chief Health Information Officer. Randy and Tim, thank you both so much for your time today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. COVID-19 certainly accelerated the use of technology in healthcare, specifically with things like virtual visits. But now we're a few years in to that initial rollout. What is the national landscape for technology in healthcare as it stands in 2024? Partly, when we were sort of on the front side of COVID, the industry was really moving towards digital health in kind of a sort of slow, measured adoption pace. As we were during COVID, we saw an incredible acceleration towards the use of digital technologies. And now as kind of the excitement has sort of receded, we are now thinking about things like digital visits and digital contact with patients as more as just actually part of a continuous care function. There's no more the structure, this construct of a visit is how we engage with you. It's not putting it on some pedestal as some sort of separate foreign construct for delivering care. It is really just part of the continuum. So we change sort of how we interact and we use different tools to interact. And the crazy part is when we think about digital technologies, what has made the biggest leap from my lens is that we have this clinical grade technologies that are available at consumer grade price points. That is the radical shift. It's been a wild ride uh, when you're watching the investments that are going on in digital health. And I think now investors and us as health providers are looking for outcomes. I think that's an area that um, is a little controversial right now. So there was a ton of investment in telehealth, uh, chronic disease management. A recent study came out in April that showed of the billions of dollars that we're spending in diabetes digital management, it's not working. You know, the, the, the results are not showing clinical benefit and the total cost of care is actually increasing. So I think it's causing some question of where we should be investing in digital health. Obviously AI is like where all the money is going to right now. Uh, And I think many folks are very excited about that. When we look at care today and these new digital tools, prior to or during the pandemic period, people were prepared to take anything on. Let's experiment with this, take on this, take on that. And we ended up really with sort of a a portfolio of sort of all these things that kind of at the end that we had to do the integration work around. So we are much more select now around taking on capabilities that we see a very clear path, plan and path to return on those investments. No longer can we basically take on anything, try to stand up a capability, and then basically ultimately have to retire our portfolio of tools. So when you're looking at that plan of whether you bring everything in and, and just see what sticks or just be very uh, specific about what it is that you want to bring in, Christiana Care has already been nationally recognized, and I, and I want to make sure I get some of the terminology right here, about deploying new organizational digital capabilities for both patients and employees. So how is Christiana Care continuing to be on the forefront of that and push technology forward? I think you can take um, a, a, whole, a whole set of health, different health systems and give them a technology, and they can all implement it, and you're going to get wildly different results. And I think choosing the right technology is only one part of the equation. I think the relentless focus that we have on people and process is what really sets us apart from everyone else. You know, when we look at putting in technology, we're looking at every single person, every stakeholder that's going to be touching the new process or the technology and and looking at their role in the adoption chain and making sure that each one of those people has a win or they at least have buy-in. Because unless we have everybody on board, that project's not going to be successful. And I think this is where we have proven that we are able to scale, to execute. Our industry partners know that. They want to partner with us, and it gives us the credibility and the voice to really be able to drive change in the industry. Uh, We are driving change. And building on top of that, we've also built an infrastructure to take in 
the new technologies that exist and work on the use case and the business case. And so we've got a, we have a very core set of processes how we run these in a very disciplined way where we experiment. We build, we, de we design, we build, we launch, we experiment, we pause, we stop, we look back, we reflect, we learn, we iterate, and we, re re and we restart that process. And we do that with these ultimately, ultimately to driving towards that high performance of value that we can think, that we think we can get from these technologies. And, and back to Randy's uh, previous point too, we're not just doing digital just for the sake of doing digital. We're not bouncing from pilot to pilot. We're not just bringing stuff in and experimenting. We are really diving deep and scaling these solutions to really get the impact that we need. Tim, let's go further from there. What at Christiana Care is having the biggest impact in terms of technology and patient care? I don't think there's just one thing, you know, and when you think about the entire ecosystem, technology is really already breaking down the barriers and the boundaries between how people manage their general personal health and wellness uh, and medical care, which is what we specialize in. It's really changing the way people think about how managing their health as well as how they're incorporating it into their everyday lives. I mean, patients are already using apps. Two thirds of US adults have used a digital health app in the last 12 months. 35% are using wearables and 50% of those are using them every single day. And so when you kind of look at the um, just traditional healthcare utilization, the average patient sees a provider physically about 3.5 times in a year. And when you look at the broader ecosystem, you may have an ED visit or admission, it's still like less than eight days out of the year that they're interacting with an actual health system. And so that leaves, to do the math, what, 357 days of opportunity uh, for us to just kind of slide in, be present, be ready to engage patients in this, what I like to call this digital white space. Uh, and, and, that's, and that's what we've been doing. We've been building digital follow-up protocols. We've been building a digital care plans. We're remotely monitoring patients. We're developing a whole ecosystem of new asynchronous and synchronous care and communication options to be able to continuously engage patients. And it's really about using these technologies to tr transform the, the paradigm of care, you know, the, the, the traditional episodic, transactional, find it, fix it, to a care model that's much more continuous, coordinated, proactive, personalized, and consumer-centric. Uh, so it's not just one thing, but it's a, it's a whole ecosystem of capabilities that we're doing to really um, drive change with our patients. In some ways, we think the greatest technology that you can give a patient is agency. And so by using these tools, along with our processes and how we choose to engage, if you can return or create the agency for the patient, the, re the, the ability to receive and act on their journey and be a participant in their care journey really changes the paradigm, really is functionally very different from the thesis of just throwing technology in front of people. One of Christiana Care's other efforts when it comes to technology and innovation is the Health and Technology Innovation Center at Christiana Care. What does that bring to the, the, the game plan? So the Health and Technology Innovation Center at Christiana Care is a place where we're able to sort of bring uh, products or new technologies in as an entry point, kind of a clearinghouse for the organization. One of the key things that we're doing now is the generative AI work, as we've all been sort of immersed in in the last year. So in that space, we're developing our own large language model capabilities. We're deploying very interesting clinical and non-clinical use cases to leverage the technology. And so crazy enough, you know, when, when this was first introduced, I was having sort of two different meetings, you know, kind of back to back. I'd sit down with one team in the organization and talk about sort of the risks of generative AI and say, all right, we gotta slow down. We have to be methodical. We have to build policy. We have to build procedure. We need to create the governance structures to make decisions. While I could then in the afternoon go to a, a, a different meeting and saying to the technology folks in the Health and Innovation Center saying, hey, speed up deploy the technology, let's get the, the, the cloud-based capabilities ready to do this, let's appoint a technical fellow who can sort of bridge the technology to the capability. So we were doing all of this together. So that's one of the important roles. It's, that's a place where in our Health and Technology Innovation Center, it can begin to wrestle those new technologies and sort of pull them out of the wild and then make sense of them and then begin deploying and testing and rolling out capability. 
Tim, in addition to your work in the technology space, you are also one of the physicians who work in Christiana Care emergency departments. How do you see this firsthand as a provider, as one of our thousands and thousands of caregivers here at Christiana Care? When I talk about all these things, you know, all this great digital technology, it can't be additive. We can't just continue to add things on top of what care teams are already doing. And, and that's where another technology plays another role, really. So how do we leverage technology to let our care teams, their providers work at top of license? Removing the waste, removing the noise, automating processes, creating efficiencies, using AI to create better decision support to really elevate uh, what our providers are, uh, and care teams are able to do. You know, a great example of this is, you know, COVID was a catalyst for change, right? So we saw tremendous growth in telehealth. We also saw a tremendous growth in portal utilization. We have quadrupled the number of patients enrolled in the portal since pre-pandemic, and the number of messages going to our providers and care teams has increased by 10x. That was out of our control. Patients found an avenue, something they valued, uh, and they just kept doing it. While telehealth rates have gone down, portal messaging and continuous communication with their care teams has gone up. That's a great thing, but not necessarily on the backs of providers. So that's work that we need to do. We're in a position now where we can take a much more methodical approach. So as we're implementing these new technologies, we have to be cognizant of the burden um, uh, of our care teams and making sure that these technologies don't add, but are actually Im improving their experience and making them more efficient and improving the relationship. Coming back to a strategic theme as we've deployed and all these things you just heard Tim talk about, from a strategic theme perspective, one of our goals that we drive towards is the abstracting away of the complexity with the technology. Technology shouldn't be adding complexity. So we focus very hard on how do you, um, how do you abstract it, both for the provider and the patient. And they're really two sides of the same coin. Obviously, when you start thinking about the asynchronous connections, the off-hours connections, the different ways that we can communicate with patients and providers. So we think about them holistically as a dyad or a unit together to do that and then drive reduction and abstraction of complexity away and away and away and be relentless and ruthless in doing that. You, you mentioned people having wearables or, or whether they even have access to the internet. With, with Christiana Care's uh, priority of, of looking at uh, health equity, are we worried about how this technology affects the digital divide? Absolutely. And um, I think we uh, think um, that technology can actually help us address health disparities. It does start uh, with the technology. We have to take a very thoughtful and inclusive approach when we're choosing, designing, building, implementing technology to make sure that we're not creating or exacerbating existing health disparities. But we're also looking for opportunities. So one of the things is every single digital project that we do, it goes back to our core mission, creating innovative, effective, affordable, and equitable systems of care, equity, right? That's one of the biggest things we worry about, especially when we're doing digital projects. So every digital project has an equity goal. You know, I'll give you a, an example is, you know, we embarked on a digital intake a couple years ago. So lots of concern, right? You're going to be doing digital intake. You're excluding large populations. People can, don't have the right technology. But we saw it as an opportunity to solve a problem. And, you know, when you think about, um, you, know, you know, collecting sensitive data from patients, you know, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, doing mental health and social screenings, it's very uncomfortable for caregivers to ask those kind of questions. And sometimes assumptions are made, uh, things, um, uh, questions are changed. And so we're not getting the most accurate data. This is one area where like kind of extracting the human out of the equation, allowing patients to self-report and to do it digitally is actually in going to improve the quality of our data so that we can better understand where the disparities and where we need to intervene. You know, through digital intake, we are able to triple the number of patients screened for depression across all of our ambulatory practices. We've scaled the addition of social determinants of health screening across all of our primary care practices. You know, not asking our providers, look back to the other question, not asking our care teams to do more work and more screenings. It's all done digitally. Referrals are made automatically and they're automated, reducing the burden on, on everyone, giving patients, patients access to the, the social services that they need. One of the things as we were approaching digital intake was making sure that we were choosing the right technology. A lot of folks use digital intake that's within their electronic health record, 
but it requires you to have a portal. We wanted to make sure that we implemented a solution that allowed patients to do it on their phone, on their computer, if they had a portal, if they didn't have a portal, and if they don't have any of those things, that we would have a way to allow patients to be able to digitally screen when they came into the offices, assisted by the staff with an iPad. So again, you know, making sure we're choosing the right technology, making sure we're not excluding populations, and making sure that we're very mindful of the digital divide is uh, core to how we approach every project. So anyone listening to this, be they a patient or a caregiver here at Christiana Care or somewhere else in healthcare, how can they play an active role in expanding the use cases and the technological world in healthcare? This is really a team sport. You know, we really need to help our patients adopt these new technologies. It's not just as simple as build it and they'll come. Our care teams play a very important role in helping our patients understand technology, embrace technology, and also support the technology when our patients are actually using it. One of those things as we think about making it easier for patients to use the technology is to actually be thoughtful about what's the process and how do we want to engage them. So we've, we've seen a ton of technologies that involve texting, but, and, and, and we don't, you know, I text with my father and the like, but there are populations of patients where the simplicity of instead of an app, just a text through their phone is going to accomplish what they need to do. So we shouldn't necessarily be building the same sort of platform and tool set for all. It should be a platform with tool sets that can be levered to match what people need in that particular workflow at that time. So if you want to ask the patient a simple question, perhaps the right tool is a text that just says press one for yes and two for no. Like, Do you need help? Are you experiencing pain beyond expectation? So, so as we think about that, that plays a key role. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's not one size fits all. You know, the technology and the choices that we make really have to be fit for purpose and fit for population. And what is your message to patients who are using all of this? Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> you know, pe- people want to be engaged in their care, and we have an accountability. So what they need to do is hold us accountable for delivering the capabilities that allow them to engage in their care And let's be intentional, and let's be smart, let's be bold. And when we integrate those three things together, we get great outcomes. Randy and Tim, thank you both so much for your time today. Thanks for having us. Thank you. We'll have more information on technology at Christiana Care in the show notes for this episode. And don't forget to subscribe to For the Love of Health on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We'll be back in two weeks with another great conversation. Until then, thanks again for joining us. For For the the Love love of of Health. Health.